Hi there, welcome to Chemistry. My name is Jeremy Krug, and in this video, we're learning more about equilibrium and how to calculate equilibrium constants. If you're new to my channel, welcome. Take a look around. I hope you like what you see. If you do, consider slamming that thumbs up button and subscribing. This is the place for all things honors chemistry and AP chemistry. Now, in the last video, we got some practice writing equilibrium constant expressions. In this video, we're actually gonna do some calculations here. So here we have an equation, and it says for the reaction shown here at 300 kelvins, a mixture of N2 and O2 gases react and are allowed to attain equilibrium. At equilibrium, the concentration of NO gas equals 1.22 times 10 to the negative fifth molar, while N2 and O2 gases are both 1.00 molar. So part A says write the equilibrium constant expression for this reaction. So just like we had before, Kc equals products over reactants raised to the power of the coefficient. So that means Kc equals the concentration of NO, quantity squared, all over the concentrations of N2 times O2. So that's our answer to part A. The part B says calculate the equilibrium constant Kc at 300 kelvins. All we have to do here is just plug and chug those concentrations into that equation or that expression that we just wrote. So Kc equals, well, NO has a concentration of 1.22 times 10 to the negative fifth molar. So we plug that in there, and that's got to be quantity squared because, well, it's squared in the equation. Now, on the denominator, N2 and O2 are both 1.00. So I'll plug 1.00 into the positions for N2 and O2. And now I can just plug these values into my calculator and I see that the answer is about 1.49 times 10 to the negative 10th. So that's my answer for the value of Kc for this reaction at this temperature. Now once again, just like we said in the last video, equilibrium constants have no units. And so don't try to put units on there. Equilibrium constants are unitless numbers. Now, as we think about an equilibrium constant and what it actually means, what does an equilibrium constant mean? Because in a couple of our problems here, we had equilibrium constants that were very large numbers, and here we had an equilibrium constant that was a very small number. Well, if you ever have a very large equilibrium constant, one that's much greater than one, and when I say much greater than one, I'm talking like usually on the order of like a thousand or higher than that, a very large number. Well, that means that we're going to have lots of products at equilibrium, but we aren't gonna have nearly as much reactant. And so as we talk about the reaction, sometimes we'll say equilibrium lies to the right. We have a lot of products because we write products on the right side of the arrow, and we don't have a whole lot of reactants because we write reactants on the left side of the arrow. Here is an example of that. In our last video, we had an equilibrium constant that was 1.3 times 10 to the eighth. That is absolutely a very large number. That's a large equilibrium constant where we're gonna have a whole lot of products and not a whole lot of reactant left over. Now, if you have a small equilibrium constant, that means that the equilibrium constant is much smaller than one. So on the order of like, one one thousandth or even smaller than that. Well, that means that we're going to have lots of reactant left over and we're not gonna have a whole lot of product. And as we talk about that reaction, sometimes we'll say equilibrium lies to the left. And that's because we write reactants on the left side of the arrow and we have a lot of those in this case, but we write products on the right and we don't have a lot of that. So in the last example that we just did, the equilibrium constant that we calculated was somewhere on the order of you know, 10 to the negative 10th power. That's a very small number, isn't it? So absolutely, that's a small number. So that means that we're gonna have a whole lot of reactants and not a whole lot of product. And if you look at the problem, you'll see that that's exactly what we had. Now let's try one more example here. We have another uh, equation, and the first part of this says to write the equilibrium constant expression, Kc, for this reaction. So we'll once again write this like we have before, products over reactants raised to the power of the coefficients equals Kc. So in this case, Kc equals the concentration of SO2, quantity squared, times the concentration of O2, 
all over the concentration of SO3 quantity squared. So that is our answer for the first part of this, the equilibrium constant expression, Kc. Now let's try this next part of the problem. It says for the reaction above, the equilibrium constant Kc is equal to 4.08 times 10 to the negative third at 1000 kelvins. An equilibrium mixture is found to contain 0.0100 molar sulfur dioxide gas and 0.918 molar oxygen gas. Determine the equilibrium concentration of sulfur trioxide gas. So once again, we're just going to take these values and plug them in. This time, though, it tells us what the value for Kc is. It's 4.08 times 10 to the negative third. And so we plug that in the position for Kc. And then the value of SO2 is given to us in the problem as 0.0100 molar. So I plug that in. Of course, that has to be squared. And then the concentration of O2 is given to us as 0.918 molar. So I plug that in in the position of O2. Now, we don't know what the concentration of SO3 is. So that's going to be the unknown. I'll call that X. And it's squared because, you know, SO3 is squared. So now all we have here is an algebra equation, and we're going to have to solve for x. And so I think the best way to do that is to cross multiply. So if I cross multiply, I get 4.08 times 10 to the negative third times x squared equals, you know, 0 0.0100 squared times 0.918, which is 9.18 times 10 to the negative fifth. Now I divide both sides by 4.08 times 10 to the negative third, and I get that x squared equals 0 0.0225. Now, I just take the square root of that value to find that the answer for x is 0 0.150. And the unit for concentration is molar. So that means that the concentration of x, or our SO3, is 0 0.150 molar. So that's how you can solve an equilibrium problem like this, where you're given the Kc value, and you have to solve for one of the uh, concentrations of the substances in the reaction. Hey, I hope you learned something about equilibrium problems and how to solve them, and also the significance of equilibrium constants as well. As you can probably tell, this is the last video in this fairly long playlist of honors chemistry videos. I hope that over this series you've learned something about chemistry. I hope you've been able to deepen your interest and deepen your understanding of the world around you as it relates to chemistry. I'm Jeremy Krug. Thanks so much for watching, and I hope to see you in my next series, which is AP Chemistry, and hope you continue learning as well. Thanks for watching, and keep learning chemistry.